On this episode of Nerds to Men, we discuss Legion and who is Patriot. We discuss X-Men and an interview with Kevin Sorbo. Hercules. All that and more on... Welcome to this episode of Nerds to Men. I'm Brad Reed. Cameo's here. Gog's here. Uh-huh. It's a good time today. It's a Thursday. Uh, I think we've pretty much decided we're going to start getting our shows in and done and ready to go on Sunday nights. Yes. It's Thursday uh, when we're taping. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, you'll you'll be able to check it out on Sunday. Sunday. So, uh, how's everything going for you guys? Pretty good, man. How about yourself? Pretty good. Pretty good. I want to plug something that's coming up February 12th. That's Sunday. It's a Sunday. Uh-huh. It's a is, Sunday, Sunday, is Sunday. Is that... Is that <laughs> Is that The Walking Dead? Yes. Did they come back that day? Yeah. You don't know. Yes, I'm serious. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, that's good to know. Actually, before that, and I don't have all the deets yet, but I'll, I'll get them as we go, but there's going to be like a, a Balthazar. Balthazar's Ladies of Wrestling. Yeah. They're going to have it just around the corner from where we tape mm-hmm. uh, at the pump, right, Gog? Yes, it's at Le Pump. Are you going to be at this event, Gog? I am. I generally, <laughs> well, in the past, I've participated multiple times. I just I didn't have the time to devote to going to practices this time around. So, unfortunately, uh, Gago Gagarino will not <laughs> be making an appearance. Well, but he will be standing idly by watching everybody. I think, okay, I've got a great idea, okay? And this is just a, I guess, a, a sneak preview. We'll probably have to get it approved. But let me throw this idea by you. Okay. Okay? Because I'll be there. Yes. Uh, Bill is 5K, who oh, yes. was on our show for the South Park show. The infamous yeah, Bill is 5K. He has recruited me to be one of the announcers for these wrestling dope, matches. Yeah, dope, yeah. Dope. So me and Bill is 5K. So what I'm thinking is at some point during the broadcast, you got to come in, hit me with a chair, and then you take over. Yeah. That'd yeah. Be funny. Oh, that'd yeah. be awesome. That'd come be awesome. if I was dressed up like Gogger Gogarina. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> come on. Well, you know, they wouldn't let me uh, actually get in the ring this time. We had a we had a little bit of an issue with me getting too yeah. handsy with some of the wrestlers <laughs> last time around. And, yeah. Uh, we should totally do that. <laughs> that'd be awesome. Yeah, All right. I'm down. I well, still have my ref shirt. You got to call Balthazar. All right. All right. I'm not going <laughs> to. Usually what I'll do is just uh, shave my facial hair configuration into the, just the mustache. Uh-huh. Thing. Right. But I don't feel like I really want to commit to that. Well, <laughs> hey. Point. I'm really I happy think... with the way the beard's going lately. Hey, yeah, yeah. Listen, Gogger Gogarino, he's he's been let go. Yeah. He's, he's, he's let himself go. Yeah. Got he's, the beard. Yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden, he's like, they're holding this match in my backyard? Yeah. Uh, no. I don't think <laughs> no. so. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to be great. But be gentle when you hit me with this chair, please. Yeah. I mean, I want it to break <laughs> over me, but... I also want it to be like a rickety chair I'll that's already broken. Paper mache. <laughs> yeah, so I think this is going to be great. Yeah, and the theme this time around, they do a different theme every time. They do. It's garbage pale kids this time around. Oh, which dope. I love, yeah. Dope. yeah. I think my uh, announcing name is going to be Bradley Rash. Nice. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that's my garbage pail kid name. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I want to talk about this show that's coming up next week, February yes. uh, 6th. 8th, 8th, right? Wednesday. On FX Legion. Mm-hmm. I've been looking forward to this show for a while because it's an X-Men show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, not too many X-Men shows on TV in a while. And there really hasn't been. The The only X-Men show was a special, and it was uh, the Generation X. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that was, that was a movie. 90s. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I was a, a very small boy when that came that, out. And yeah. I think that's why a lot of X-Men fans just have this certain appreciation for the 90s because, you know, the, the comic books were so big. The cartoon was... You know, yeah. I love that show. Yeah. I loved it. I still watch that show. Any kind of reference or, you know, throwback to the 90s with the X-Men, it's really cool. Uh, but this show, come to find out, not going to be really following the comics, not really no. going to be a comic book show. The guy who created this show created the show Fargo. Yeah. Uh, was that one on FX2? Um, I think it was. Or FX1. No, I mean, <laughs> FX as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, he created that show, and I, I didn't really get into that one, but I know a lot of people really like it. I guess it kind of was based on the real-life story, yeah. but took a more like realistic 
approach to it, I think. Mm-hmm. Whereas, did you see Fargo, Gog? I've seen the movie. Yeah. I've not watched the, sh- the program. I no, think I the think great thing about the movie was the comedy. I thought Fargo was on Netflix. Or did, they, or did Netflix do their own version? I don't know. You can watch a, uh, the Fargo show on Netflix, I'm pretty okay. sure. Oh, okay. okay. The, yeah. Maybe no, I'm what... pretty sure it started on FX. Okay. I, okay. I think. I, like I said... I should have do done a little more checking. research, but do a fact check. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're if you're listening and uh, Brad's wrong, make sure to call him out on social media commenting. Yeah, yes, just please. yeah, get on there and tell me I'm make sure to always let us know when we're wrong. <laughs> yes, yes, we like that. <laughs> Regardless, he's going to bring the same approach to this show where it's not quite so fantastic. I guess mm-hmm. is the word I would say. So it's going to be more based in realism, which. That doesn't make any sense based on the character that the show is based on. Well, it does in the fact that it's going to... I think what they're going to do... Okay, so it, he's the son of Professor X. Mm-hmm. Right. But in the show, I don't think anybody's going to understand that. I think this is all going to be set up to where everybody thinks he's crazy. And so he's... and. <laughs> Crazy is such a, you know, they don't like that word anymore. So, you know, mentally unstable. I don't know. What do you even say now? Cuckoo bananas. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you know, I do. Like I said, I do want to be. I don't want to step on toes. Well, I don't want to be PC, but I also don't want to step on toes if I don't have to. I don't don't mean to say anything that sounds offensive. When when people don't think that the other, that, okay, let's say you think that I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. Well, if you told someone, hey, Cameron's crazy, then I'm crazy. I mean, to them, I'm crazy. Right. But, but I mean, you're not going to be like, oh, well, he had, he suffers from blah, 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 well, blah. Well, yeah. Because you don't know. But that's the thing is the people that do suffer from those things, they don't really want people saying they're crazy either. So, Well, can we say then, you know, off the wall? Is it off the wall? Is that, is that cool? I don't know. I mean, I don't, left of center. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would say, you know, they, they, they've got their own issues. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll do that. Aren't we all a little bit left of center? Well, yeah, we you're never going to survive unless you get a little crazy. Mm-hmm. That's, That's what Seal said. Yeah. And I go by what Seal says. Yeah. Seal, Seal is, uh, is, is life. The yeah. prophet. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> the prophet seal. Prophet. Anyway, back to Legion. <laughs> Way off track. There you go. Uh, yeah. <laughs> They're going to see him as somebody who's mentally disturbed. Yeah. There we and go. they won't understand that he's a mutant as well. Yeah. But it doesn't make sense to me that, like, in this world, everybody would have known who his father was, whether they knew he was a mutant or not. Right. <laughs> right. Why wouldn't they start saying, okay, before I start saying this guy's just completely off the wall or left of center or whatever you want to call it, Let's check to see if he's a mutant first. Or you see what I'm saying? Yep. I don't know. Yeah, I don't see why they wouldn't do that either. Yeah. I mean, it, so I'm saying you don't have to make a comic book show that realistic. Yeah. <laughs> right. Does that right. bother you? Uh, do you want it to be a little more like fantastic? I mean, yes and no. Yes, you can make it realistic to the point where it's like Gotham. Mm hmm. That seems pretty realistic because, you know, they're not doing anybody that has, you know, superpowers. Like They do bring people back from the dead, though. Well, yeah, but I mean, that's like ridiculously the, the, like the, the biggest thing that they do. Mm-hmm. But it's not anybody flying around. Mm-hmm. And even though you can make that realistic, too, I think um, Man of Steel, I think they made that as realistic as they could. Right, right. I mean, but I mean, you know, there's going to be some type of fantasy yeah. in it because these it's not normal to see somebody flying around. It's right. not normal to see somebody with superpower strength and right. all that stuff. So, I mean. Well, that's why it brings me to kind of my thought on what I know about Legion so far. And this is off of, I've just read some reviews. They have they made the first three episodes of the series available to the press. So a couple of people have seen it already. I'm just going off of that. Mm-hmm. That's three episodes in. The fourth episode, and he might get a X-Men suit and fly around. I don't know. <laughs> but I, I from what I know, though, they're saying that's not going to happen, though. Yeah. It's going to stay based in this reality that they're creating yeah. uh, where it's not, you know, over the top. That's what's up for Legion. Yeah, I think that'd be really neat. I think taking a different look and, you know, trying to make it more real. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, you know, all the X-Men movies, obviously, they're fake. Ain't nobody, right. like you say, ain't nobody's like trying to mind trick you to do something and, you know, claws aren't coming out of my hands and all that crazy stuff. So I think it's kind of cool that we are focusing on, on as far as we know, it's just him in this mental hospital. Right. So right. I, think, I think that'd be cool. I like the actors and actresses involved. Aubrey Plaza is yes. going to be in this. Yes. So that's pretty cool. That's so. my boo. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, I was yeah. reading on here, and it's saying basically that the show isn't going to hint, like you were saying, at Charles Xavier being his father right out of the gate and is not going to rely heavily on world building as far as the connection to the Marvel universe. Um, more so basically just exploring this person who has been diagnosed at a young age. So it's a lot of the stuff you were just saying. Um, I guess he all like – while he's trying to figure all of this out, he's also being um, shadowed by a government organization that's looking to weaponize him as ah, well yeah. as a group that is looking to help him claim, understand, and control his abilities. More. So I'm wondering where his dad is at this point, you know, because you would think with his amazing ability— his mutant ability right. yeah, that he could be like, hmm, I feel like I have a son out there. Probably should help my well, son. Yeah. Well, that, I, I can't remember. I think it was in the uh, the uh, 90s cartoon show. Like he and his son were kind of like on the outs. Like uh, they weren't like, oh, this is my dad. You know, I love him, blah, blah, blah. Like he right. had like no respect for him in the uh, show. Okay. From what I can remember. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Well, here's another hole I want to poke in it. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. You gonna start getting those bedroom eyes again? Yeah, bedroom <laughs> eyes. No, no, I'm kidding. Uh, I I really want to see this show. I I think it's gonna be good. Well, we got uh, three days. Couple, yeah, three. <laughs> so, uh, but check it out. Just don't expect that it's gonna be a real X Men heavy show. Yeah, and uh, you know I, I'm gonna kind of compare it to Gotham. Because Gotham is its own entity. Yeah. It is, yeah. Because it's not it cause, by now. Because yeah. it's not uh, focusing on, you know, the Flash, Arrow, DC's right, Legends. Right. Even though they could. Yeah. Because uh, Cisco can change, <laughs> can go to different worlds. Yeah. But, I mean, I think that would be the only, the only way that they would be able to tie all this stuff in is through Cisco. <laughs> you, you know what I think will be cool if they go, if they do this with Legion is maybe after he starts to embrace his powers and stuff. He teams up with Quicksilver, and they just pal around, you know, like uh -huh. the, the kids of the older folks, you know. Yeah, yeah. Just, the rest of the show is them just buddying around the world, I putting like out that. fires and stuff. That'd be dope. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that, Gog? Just putting out fires? That's exclusively well, what they do? They yeah, yeah. Become fire yeah they're firefighters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Everybody loves a good firefighter show, yeah, right? That's yeah, true. right? Yeah. They have like 10 of them on I mean, TV. FX, it's perfect. Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> Did you see Dennis Leary show up? Yeah. A lot of what the uh, rundown of this show sounds like to me, this movie split. Okay. Uh, here's another character that has some powers but is also mentally disturbed or, uh, you know, however they would put that. He's got dissociative identity disorder, and mm -hmm. I think that's what— uh, the character from Legion yeah. is supposed yeah, to have, too. Yeah, I think too. Like multiple yeah. uh, personality Yeah, they changed it— yeah. There was, I was watching a show called um, was it United States of Terra where mm -hmm. she has multiple personality disorder. But they uh, specify in the show that they have changed the terminology to where now it's dissociative mm -hmm. identity disorder. Right, right. So here's a couple. You're seeing like a show and a movie that may have the same feel to it. Hmm. Uh, I don't want to spoil Split yet because you guys haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, don't. I'm in that movie. Yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> in that movie, but I haven't seen it yet, and I don't know anything about it. Right, because it's your Gog is just one of the personalities. Yeah, I was, <laughs> that's the thing that people don't realize about my uh, yeah. acting is I'm a method actor, so I actually was going into those alternate characters while we were filming. I right. don't remember most of the filming process. So, right. There you go. Yeah. There you so go. I'm anxious, I'm anxious to see what I was able to come up with on that one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I wish you guys would because we'd be talking, we'd have a whole segment about it. Yeah. Actually, I kind of want to do like a whole M. Night Shyamalan episode. Oh, yeah. that'd be dope. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'm that's down. what we may do next. So okay. you guys got to watch you Split. Gotta, you guys got to watch Split. Watch you haven't, it. Yes. You all got to watch it. So then that way M. we. M. Night Shyamalan. Nam, 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 ding, dong. <laughs> <laughs> so here's a, something I heard a couple of weeks ago on a different podcast, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, this is pertaining to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., which is a show that you pretty much out of all of us three, you're the only one who keeps up with. Yeah. Post Ghost Rider. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I heard a rumor that actually I think maybe could trump what they were doing with Ghost Rider uh, and would probably be a lot more cost efficient, which is... In the Marvel world right now, and the movies and S.H.I.E.L.D. do coexist, mm -hmm. 
Uh, I guess they got a, a director, a new director, director Mace. Yeah. yeah, Jeffrey Mace. Yeah. Well, apparently he has some action where he becomes Patriot at some point. Yeah, and, and I'm not really too savvy with Patriot. Right. Um, I know Iron Patriot. Yeah, I, I didn't really know. I, I didn't really catch them saying calling him a Patriot because technically he was supposed to be an Inhuman. Right. And come to find out, he's been lying about it this whole time. And it's just the government's been, you know, uh, helping him out, giving him these powers. And basically, it's like a uh, the super soldier serum. Right, right. So, I mean, it comes out like that. And then... Um, but he and, could develop into, like, a, a legit superhero, right? Oh, yeah, if yeah. he really wanted to, yeah. And so, definitely. I guess one of the theories is that since in the movie world, Steve Rogers isn't Captain America, and he doesn't have his shield. Right. His shield is owned by S.H.I.E.L.D., yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the thought is, is that Patriot could end up taking the shield, become like the new Captain America on, I guess, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. Which I think would give it a little more juice. I think it'd be kind of cool, but I don't see them going that route because they probably might when Chris Evans and Sebastian Stan are done with their characters. Because I really think because there was a picture floating around um, that the Winter Soldier, Bucky Barnes, was carrying Captain America's shield. Right. So I'm thinking he might be the next Captain America. Ooh, that would be interesting. Because I also was hearing, you know, during the Infinity Wars, Captain America, Steve Rogers, isn't going to be Captain America, obviously, because of after Civil War. Right. Like, he's going to be called what he was called in the um, comics, n- the Nomad. I think they'll probably do the Patriot thing probably sometime after that, if this show, if Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. continues to go on. Because, I mean, you never, because, I mean, what in five years from now it might be totally totally different see and to me they've got to keep adding some new stuff to this show because i think that i mean correct me if i'm wrong but what i hear from people who do watch the show regularly Mm -hmm. people like you yeah is you're watching it to keep track basically between movies because you got to know all the B stories or c stories yeah but they all go along with the movies so you know you're hooked on it in that way. Yeah. Plus, you've been watching it for what? How many years now? Uh, I think it's been on four seasons, so for the past four years, at least. Okay. So, if, you, if you're going, like I say, on, on that route, your hope is, I guess, is that they'll keep refreshing with new characters. I mean, who's the bad guy right now? Um, I forgot his name. He's a doctor, but he is a head of the LMD deal which is the life model decoys right and that's what the title of this show is is uh agents of shield lmd is he the guy that created the the robot girl at the beginning of the show okay okay, yeah yeah yeah. okay so but again the uh, the villain isn't like a comic book super villain right see what i mean right gog you could probably agree with this you're only as good as your villain. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It, it takes a very, uh, it's important to have a strong antithesis to the heroes. I mean, my one of my favorite characters, you know, we're talking Marvel a little bit more today, but the Joker, of course, mm-hmm. yeah. my favorite. And he's the villain. But Batman is only as good as his villains, I think. Yeah. You know, Captain America. I don't know. Some of the Marvel villains, though, in like the movies and stuff, the villains are always a little more secondary to yeah. me in the I Marvel world. One of the ones that stood out for me the most <laughs> In and the Marvel movies, and this might just be solely because I'm such a fan of the actor who did the voice for it was Ultron, right? And yeah, I'm just a huge fan of James Spader, so I might be partial to that. Had it been voiced no. by somebody else, I might not have really. But and also in the movies, they have the villain, they defeat the villain, and then they don't pop up again. You know, yeah. and so sometimes I think it's better when they spread spread it out. It makes the story more rich because they really have to dig in to find out how to defeat this person right. or yeah. these people. And that's, I think, what is so attractive about the relationship between Batman and Joker is that it just seems as though it's something that will never come to an end. It's always yeah. ongoing. Right, like, right. As if they need each, need each other. I agree. We're going to shift gears just for a second, though. I, I do want to talk a little bit uh, because <laughs> the last episode we talked a lot about Gotham. We had mm-hmm. Cameron Monaghan on, so uh, that was awesome. Uh-huh. And I found out... Like that, when we recorded our episode, we were talking about the return from the winter break 
of Gotham. Yeah. Since we do our show every two weeks, there's been a couple of episodes of Gotham. There's been three. Yeah. Now it's on its winter finale, and we won't see it again until April 24th. Yeah. <laughs> Jerks. <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. Jerks. You know, and so I'm getting the feeling that they, what they did was they crammed this Joker storyline into these three weeks, and the rest of it, because I know, and I'm, I mean, I like the title, and I like what's going to happen, but the title for the show when it returns in April is called How the Riddler got his name. And oh, so it's so, going to focus more on that. Right. One thing I always liked about Batman and the Joker was that the Joker, he'd pop up out of nowhere. Batman mm-hmm. would be flummoxed. And, and part of that was because he didn't know who the Joker was. He didn't know who the Joker yeah. identity was. In Gotham, he already knows the identity. He's tried to kill him twice as Jerome, but everybody knows he's going to be the Joker now. Yeah. They took away a, a lot of that mysteriousness that later on, this Batman wouldn't have, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. He would know who it is. I mean, what did you guys think about that three-story arc with the Joker? Were you happy with it, or did you uh, ultimately, did it fall short? Did you want more? I, want, I wanted more. Mm-hmm. I definitely want to see more. I really enjoyed the aesthetic. There's, there were a couple of moments, and I mean, Gotham doesn't typically do this, but there were a couple of moments that were extremely unsettling to watch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I enjoy that. You know, I'm not saying that as a negative thing by any means. It's just it was it was neat to see them go there. You see when they paid homage to uh, I forgot the uh, artist's name, but where you remember when he had Batgirl? And uh-huh. he sprinkled that blood. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did yeah. you see that part? Did you yeah. catch that? Yeah, that I loved good. it. That frown upside down. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. love that. I love that. because he cool. says, let's turn that frown upside down, but then paints a frown on his face. Yeah. 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 <laughs> There's weird things. Like, okay, so usually I find something that I'm like, come on now. Yeah. So Wait this is my Gotham, come on now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, when they were in the living room and Alfred's being detained by the three people, one of them had a knife, one of them had something. <laughs> Uh, yeah. And one of them had a gun. And machine gun. Yeah. So Alfred's there, and Jim Gordon sneaks in, and Jim Gordon, or Alfred, is calling out positions. Who's got what? So Jim Gordon comes in blazing, doesn't shoot the guy with the gun. That was the <laughs> dumbest thing. That's what yeah. I said, too. I was like, really? You're not going to shoot the dude with the gun? Yeah. Come on. You're going to shoot the gun with the crowbar. Really? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The guy with the crowbar. The guy that Alfred most likely could have taken. Right. Right. Oh, he sure did take the guy with the machete, though. Mm-hmm. And, oh, oh, yeah. Did you see? Okay. I'm sorry. But The Walking Dead does does this justice whenever they they kill somebody you yeah. see it go through him oh yeah yeah when alfred stabbed him with the machete you could tell that it was just on the side oh okay you could totally yeah, yeah. see it yeah. that's i was just funny. like really that's funny <laughs> which had a little bit of cg blood and after effects yeah, right. yeah. but they sure did you know went all out for the uh, face yeah oh yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah that was another thing that i had a problem okay these are just the, like underlying me looking at it from like a filmmaker's perspective not storyline sure but when he punches his face off he has a nose still and if that were the case <laughs> yeah your nose is just skin so it would have just been that cartilage bone right, right here yeah. right yeah but yeah. they just I guess didn't want to spend the extra money on the digital graphics it would have taken, which probably would have been relatively easy to do. Right. I agree with you. Aside from that, okay, I didn't get to uh, hang out with you guys the last time you talked about God right, a little bit. Right, That's why I wanted to go ahead and bring that up. But uh, do you think that he was too close to uh, Heath Ledger? Do you think it was... A little bit. A little bit. A little bit too close. I think so. I mean, there were certain times where he kind of had his own little take to it, but there were other... There were a lot of points where it was very uh, evident that he drew a lot there, there of inspiration was, yes. from Heath Ledger, which I don't yeah. necessarily have a problem with because no. it's a great character. Yeah. He yeah. looks completely different. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, what if... What if... Because the Nolan verse was a little bit steeped in realism than yeah. uh, some of the other Batman movies. What if this is the prequel to the Nolan verse? Oh, uh, hey. and, and so that's why he's a little. But then again, when the Joker popped up in the Nolan verse, he had no idea who the Joker yeah, was and his yeah. identity. So yeah, yeah. It's not. that that kind of kills that idea. But I mean, not, not technically, not really though, <laughs> because if he's not really Jerome, I mean, if Joker's not really Jerome. In the Nolan verse, oh, right, right. it could have been he, a different... Uh, yes, a, a copy of the copy. Yes. Of the, there's, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. they were saying, there's three origins. For yeah, the okay, okay, so we're back on it. There we're we back go. On it. <laughs> hey, when you have me with the theories, yeah. I'm good with you, bro. Yeah. I'm good with you. I love it, I love it. <laughs> So I was, overall, though, yeah, I was I happy. It, though, I was, sure. And I'm just like, oh, 
Joker on TV, I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. No, I, I liked him, and he was he was weird, and <laughs> I don't know. He did a good. Yeah, job. He, he did a really good job. Yeah. yeah, he did. I don't know. He did a much better job than. And when I said I wanted more. Joe Leto. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I say I wanted more, I, I, I mean I still enjoyed it. I loved it. No, loved yeah, it. That, but, no. But to but me, like, if you say you wanted more, that means that it was you know like a second helping of some good food. Well, you enjoyed it. Yeah. Well, because because <laughs> I did. I mean, I did say that I wanted more of Jared Leto's Joker to get used to him. Well, yeah, so, or but, just to see where he could potentially go. I, with exactly. Yeah, yeah, and that's what I am with Jared Leto's Joker is that I just. I haven't seen enough. Yeah. I'm glad that he did his own thing, though, or else we'd be sitting here to a- asking, you know, did he do too much of Heath Ledger? Yeah. Or, and he, I know that Jared Leto wouldn't have wanted that at all. No. no, no so, no. I, you know, so let's see. I'm still, I'm still willing to give him another shot. I still like yeah. to think I'd that like Jared Leto's him. Joker is the guy from Fight Club, so <laughs> 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 got his mouth smashed in. He's got the grill now. Yeah, I, I'm gonna push fiction. that theory till I die. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny though. I saw something on Facebook the other day about what movies could exist in the same universes, and so uh-huh. people were putting you know different movies up, and uh, I was like, yeah. <laughs> let's put in Suicide Squad and Fight Club, and <laughs> also. Nolan verse because Heath Ledger could have uh, also because that's where it all started with Fight Club and all that. Yeah. So <laughs> hey, so let's swerve back to Marvel and I wanted to ask you about a couple of X Men movies I'm heard about mm-hmm. and to see if you guys have heard anything. Um, but I did. Where are are there two movies or is there just one that is in production or going into production soon? I was I wasn't able to find anything. Okay, yeah. so the one we're talking about then is Dark Phoenix. Yeah. Okay, so that at, at the end of Apocalypse, we saw Jean Grey get her Phoenix powers, and so that's obviously going to be a continuation of Apocalypse. Then, correct? I'm going to assume so. Yeah. Yeah. So. The other thing I had been hearing is that we were going to get an X Men movie that was set in the '90s. Mm-hmm. So that, to me, well, that, and that's already starting production. I um, I saw whoever was I can't remember. So there are two movies. I'm going to assume so now okay. because I didn't hear anything about the Dark Phoenix saga. Right, right. But I did hear because it was like late last year like maybe in November, uh-huh, early December, uh-huh. somewhere around there, that the new X-Men movie is starting pre-production. So the Jean Grey movie could just be the 90s movie. It could be. All I right. I don't know. Right. I don't know. So, or, I mean, it's going to probably be X-Men, the Dark Phoenix saga. Yeah. So I, I would see it more as like the standalone type movie. Or it could be. Uh, you know, kind of like what we get with Wolverine or that. But yeah. but possibly not. I mean, they go from trying to smash in 10 different storylines to the Jean Grey movie. It, it's possible they could just be like, hey, let's stop doing that. And, right. And it seems like from what I'm reading at this point, the uh, Dark Phoenix film is all just speculation at this point uh-huh. because of the way that things kind of ended um, with Apocalypse. Um, I'm not seeing anything about confirmation, but there's a lot of speculation ah. thinking that that's going to be the direction that they go with the next So we're still kind of wave. in the dark about where, where they're going X-Men-wise movie. Yeah. Right. So let's talk about if we were in charge of the X-Men movies. Let's do it. First of all, I would probably do whatever I could to get back into Marvel. <laughs> so I don't, I don't know if I want that, though, with X-Men. X-Men is so much darker than, like, the Avengers. Well, yeah. I, yeah. Mean, I mean, the Avengers can be dark, but, like, okay, the way that they took Logan, mm-hmm. or, I mean, the Wolverine movies, it is pretty dark. Right. I mean, there's some lighthearted stuff, but I mean, uh, the majority of it's pretty dark. And as you see in Logan, it's rated R, so you know it's going to be 10 times worse than the PG-13 version. Like, I like how Fox is handling yeah. the X-Men. I mean, yes, there were some flops. Right. But, I mean, I like th- their route, the way they're going with Overall, it. Overall, I do, too. Mm-hmm. Um, like the movies, I just, they seem wishy-washy about, are we going to soft reboot it, which they did, and then, yeah. you know. But in the same vein, I like... Like, like now you got a Logan movie where you still have Professor X. Then you could go back to the younger James McAvoy mm-hmm. for the other, for the 90s movie. Yeah, it seems like movie. the Logan's going to be kind of like the bookend, oh, the of, bookend kind yeah. of the first X-Men films. That, I mean, they've been it's making them It's walking them out to the pasture and putting yeah, a bullet in taking them head. out to pasture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are all too old to do this. We need some of these new, young, hot Hollywood people. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. They're not going to recast Wolverine for the 90s X-Men 
movie? No, no, no. I doubt it. I think Probably I honestly not. think uh, he's too old. He's you know, old I honestly, well, that's now. what I'm saying. They I cast honest, him as the you know the the newer younger. I honestly think that the X X twenty three is going to be the the Wolverine right nineties because technically, I mean, depending on how they take it in the in the movie, I mean, it could go either way. It could be like, hey, she was just born like ten years ago, and yada yada yada, or they were working on her in the nineties, right, and she was still this young. Does she not age? No, she has the same uh, powers as. Uh, right. Wolverine. Right. So, I mean, she could be like, okay, let's say whenever right after her or after uh, Wolverine was made, let's say 15 years down the road, they found the same girl with the same powers as him and started working on her. Therefore, she's still that young until that time. So right, right. now she can grow older as that character well, with the 90s X-Men. Okay, remind me, right. I've, I've read the uh, Old Man Logan stories. <laughs> Remind me what caused him to age, you know, at, at some point. Um, it didn't really say. It just said, I mean, it was just over time. Okay, it's finally, so. It's finally getting old enough to where his powers are starting to de- deteriorate. Oh, okay. Yeah. So she will be young for a while, but eventually. She could, yeah. Yeah, grow up. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Sweet. It's like opposite dog years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm excited about Logan, man. I yeah, can't yeah, wait yeah, to see sure. this yeah. movie. Uh, that month, one comes out. A month from month. tomorrow. Yeah. Yes. So. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be. Uh, I think this one. White time. Yeah. The others been so, so I don't see anybody being disappointed by Logan. I feel like they're no. taking a lot of care making this movie probably and most likely the last time that we'll see Hugh Jackman, who has been yeah. iconically playing the role of Wolverine for over a decade now. Absolutely. So I think that they're really going to take a lot of a lot of care to make sure that this is primo if i were in charge though i would still go back even though we're kind of got a cast that's in between hugh jackman Mm -hmm. and then the logan and all that i would still recast him as somebody who maybe even kind of looks close enough the same or or whatnot because i want more x-men movies and i want wolverine in them you know uh like we and we discussed this on the last podcast it does explain kind of to me anyway in the in the previews where he has the comic book version of wolverine the yeah. x-men comic books and Same, so it's yeah. like Same. that's why you didn't ever get the costume and it's funny that they introduced that idea that those comic books exist in the world in the universe yeah. of yeah the x-men and i think that's kind of an interesting thing i'll be anxious to see how they justify that being something that could happen. Right. I just want a lot more X-Men movies. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm yep. all right with that. I'd also bring back the X-Men cartoon. Yeah. Yep. I would. As many people love that cartoon, mm-hmm. I'd bring it right well, back. That's, right. We live in the age of nostalgia. I mean, that's, yeah. there's so much insanity happening in the world, the external world. Right. So it's just, it's comforting for us to be able to go back to a place that we can remember where things were like, oh, you know, I yeah. just have to get up and go to school today. And like, you don't have a whole lot of responsibility, things of that nature. Right. Well, and that's why I was a little bit, I'm not going to say let down, but just a little bit like, huh, when I found out that Legion wasn't going to quite be like an X-Men type show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it, I think eventually it will be more. I do. For now, at least it's going to be a lot different than most comic book shows, even what you would see on Netflix, you know, with what Marvel does. So, you know, that's okay too. That's okay too. Uh, Tonight, tonight, actually, uh, when we record this, like I say, this is a Thursday night. The new DC show, Powerless, is about to oh, yeah. premiere tonight on NBC. Okay. Okay. I, I want to see that. It I thought it was like, next week, too. but uh, No, it is tonight. Okay. And this is, a, this is like a comedy type show. It is a comedy. It? And, uh, you know, I don't know if it was always the plan or if they kind of rebooted it. it. No, it, it was. It was always the plan? Yeah. Okay. The story revolves around Bruce Wayne's cousin. Okay. <laughs> and so... Is Vanessa Hudgens Bruce Wayne's cousin? No, it's a guy. Okay. Uh, it's a... Um, I think it's Rob Turtleneck. Rob... Rob Turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Rob Turtleneck. <laughs> hey guys, Rob Turtleneck here. <laughs> so his name is, I'm going to butcher this probably, Alan Tudic. Turtleneck. I think it's Turtleneck. Tudic. 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 Okay. <laughs> Vanessa Hudgens is in it. Her name is Emily on the show. Stupid. <laughs> I like Vanessa Hudgens. She I just, I'd had no reason to say that. I just thought it would be funny. <laughs> well, it was. It was funny. Alan, however you want to say his name. Tur- turtleneck. Turtleneck. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave that in. We're just going to start renaming all actors. Because we did it with uh, Joe Mangelo. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, um, okay. <laughs> but he's one of those guys, if you see his face, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know who he is. He's but been he's, in a lot of stuff. He, yeah, he has. He's been, let's see, here's a couple of, he wasn't in Rogue One, was he? He was in Dodgeball. He was the pirate. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he yeah. was in Rogue One. <laughs> was he really? Yeah. Yep. But he was probably uh, he was a stormtrooper covered. Yeah, yeah. he was an I Robot. I Robot. Yeah, he's been in a lot of stuff. Absolutely, he's playing Bruce right. Wayne's cousin, and they go around cleaning up all the the messes and what. Got Ron Funches. Oh, <laughs> oh, I love the Funches and Bunches. Ron Funches. Hmm. I don't know who that is. <laughs> he's a comedian. Oh, I see. <laughs> I don't know who that is. You should know these things. Come on. Is he a local comedian? No. Is he a international comedian? He is a worldwide superstar, Ron Funches. What's his style of comedy? Um, uh, let's see. He's an actor and writer known for trolls, get hard, and undateable. Oh, okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Brad. Ron Funches. Oh, okay. I know who Ron Funches is. I actually do know who he is. He's pretty <laughs> funny. Uh, so, yeah, this show's going to be a good show. Check that one out. There's a couple video games that Marvel is planning on releasing. Oh, yep. I'm, I, I was excited to hear about a Guardians of the Galaxy video game. Yeah. Yep, and I'm pretty excited for the new Avengers game. Yeah, so, you know, that's the thing. Marvel, DC, Marvel doesn't do as good with their video games, I don't think. And so I, if they could put out, like, a really good Guardians of the Galaxy and a really good Avengers, yeah, that would be pretty dope. Yeah, and I mean, you okay, the only thing that DC has is Batman. But it's guess. so good. I know, it, yeah. is, it is so good. But I mean, I'm just saying, though, they, they've only had one video well, game. Marvel uh, has put yeah. out tons of video games. Yeah, but they're just not that good. Right, right, yeah. right. I mean, I'm not, I'm not The Lego me. games, the Lego ones are good. Yeah. Oh, I love the Both Lego sides. Batman. Lego and Lego uh, Marvel. Yeah, yeah. Those, yeah. Those are yeah. all good. Games. Well, no, they put out a lot of, ga- you know, a lot of, like, Injustice style, even. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, the Marvel has their own versions of those. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, nobody's got anything as good as the Batman Arkham's yet. Uh, but, no, no. you know, it seems like they've got the blueprint, so yeah. But let's supposedly make that happen. the uh, Spider-Man game that's uh, only for PS4 coming mm-hmm. out this year mm-hmm. should be, like, the probably, equivalent. Yeah, equivalent to the Arkham. Nice. Right. Well, I can't wait. So. Here's the thing. With the movie about to drop, they've got to do good with a video game, yeah. you would think. Yeah. Uh, we got a new feature today. We want to... Our, our buddy Gog. Hi, guys. Super hilarious have guy. You, have, you yes. met, have you met me before? Probably not. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Gog stays at home all the time. I'm a Hermit the Gog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hermit the Gog here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but truthfully, Gog is a hilarious guy. Thank you. Uh, I think. Uh, reason that I really wanted him to be on this podcast, other than the fact that me and Gog had always dreamed of being on a podcast. We always dreamed. We had grandiose dreams of a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. And then I don't know why. Well, probably because we're both the king of putting stuff off, but it took a while. Mm -hmm. And now we're here. Yeah. I like to let things marinate for a while. Yeah, for years. Some people have ideas and just immediately jump into working on them. Right. You know, if you wait a while and you just kind of take your time, Mm -hmm. you can do it. You can do it. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) A watch pot never boils, my nanny always used to say. A watch pot never boils. Yeah. Unless you have heat. Vision. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's mm-hmm. true. Did, did, did Nana tell you that? <laughs> Nanny, Nanny had no idea about mutant powers. I, I Nanny don't know. That. Yeah, Nanny does not know. Nanny doesn't know. Uh, but Gog does voices, a lot of voices. Yeah, most of the time by myself <laughs> um, in my bathroom looking in the mirror, but yeah, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, so we wanted to put Gog's voices to the test. Not really to the test, though, but we wanted to approach it. You see all these comic book characters in movies and TV shows, but what about the ones that you never get to see on the shows? You never know how they actually sound in real sure. life. You've seen them in the comics. You kind of, you know, the lesser known guys. And even like underdogs. names of comic book characters and stuff. How many times do you just read this stuff and then you're like, what do they really sound There's like? There's one Yeah, character? what do they sound like? Or what does this name even sound like in the way they say it? There's a character, I think he's, I um, think he's Marvel. I'm don't quote me on this, but it's doctor something or other, and it's all consonants. There's no vowels. Oh, yeah. It's like X, right. Y, something. Like, I wouldn't even know how to pronounce that. No, yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. They, they do that. Doctor S- you, so you can read it. You can read it, and you'll be like, you have it in your head what it either looks like, sounds like, whatever. Sure. 
But we wanted to bring some of that to real life here. Yeah, we're going to try it out. You know, and hey, you know, if you're out there in the Marvel Studios um, and you're looking for some voice acting work and you need a pro, uh, you know, hit me up. Feel free. So we're going to hit Gog with lesser known comic book villains, superheroes, whatever. And we're going to start. A cameo has one. We're going to give Gog like the show show the uh, video, and Gog's going to tell us what these characters would sound like. Yeah, without a whole lot of information. I'm not going to go into like trying to learn no. the powers. Basically, what they look like in their name, then I will interpret what I think they would sound like. Right. Okay, here we go. Here's the first one. This is Immortus. Yeah, I got a You get the basic head. idea. You got yeah. a tall hat and a green suit. Yeah. yeah I, he kind of kinda reminds me of the, the leader in The Hulk. The, okay. the way he looks. Anyway, this dude's <laughs> name is Immortus. Okay, Immortus. So let me, Gog. Let me see him. Just yeah. look at this picture so I can channel You give that to Gog. I got the next one loaded up. He's got a little mustache, so that's important to know. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, it's, he's got a tall head. I feel like he's, because you would think Immortus, you'd be like, oh, I am Immortus. Right, that, which right. you would instinctually think, but based on the way he looks, I'm thinking more of like, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so more, more Miss Doubtfire. <laughs> yes, almost Miss Doubtfire. <laughs> What's what you're doing? <laughs> okay, so. He's got the Joker colors. He's got... Oh, people uh, People often ask me why I must have such a tall hat, and it has to do with the way I style my hair. <laughs> Very important while I'm, while I'm out doing mischievous things to keep my hair prim and proper. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay. All right. That's okay. worse. So here's a character that, from back in the day, like I got started watching Batman on the TV show with Adam West. Oh, those. yeah. I love it. And there was a character that I always dug because he was called the Bookworm. And I always liked him because he had like a all brown leather suit, leather hat. So you'll see the picture. Here yeah. you go, Gog. And I don't recall the way that he sounded. No, no. Gog doesn't even remember this guy. So, so. it'll be funny to see his take on the Bookworm. Okay. He's got more of a most nasally voice here. He's a, I am, I am the bookworm. <laughs> okay, what? Do you remember anything about, like, he was a villain, but he was what, a was villain. His, what were his villainous powers or I, yeah, mannerisms? I, I can't remember much about him. He just had a sweet suit. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, Batman, and I'll put you to sleep with a nursery rhyme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. Here we go. Here's another one. Um, Mad Thinker. Okay. All right. What is it? Thinker or Thinker? Thinker. Thinker. <laughs> Mad Thinker. I'm a thinker. <laughs> okay. He looks kind of burly. He's wearing a, a green onesie. Yep. He's got his hands behind his back, and he's a mad thinker. He's probably got a. He's got more of a gruffy voice. He's just like, God damn it! <laughs> I forgot my keys again. <laughs> Has anybody seen my wallet? <laughs> I swear to God, if I have to watch one more episode of The View, I am gonna just probably punch somebody in the face. <laughs> probably. I love it. I love it. He just like thinks, it. man. He doesn't actually do anything mean. He just thinks mad thoughts all the time. Oh, yeah. Totally. Obviously. Here, here's another Batman villain. Okay. Professor Pig. Okay. You know anything about Professor Pig? I don't. Yeah. Spells it P-Y-G. Oh. He used to create these uh, Dollatrons. And uh, <laughs> they're pretty crazy, dude. He, yeah, so he would wear a pig mask. Okay, while he, <laughs> but he wouldn't have a pig voice. See, that's what I like to do. Is you would assume that he would be like, right, I'm having like a pig voice or right. something weird like that, right? But it seems like he would talk a little more like this, maybe. <laughs> He's like, God, I'm really trying so hard to creep everybody out, but I'm really getting tired of everyone calling me Mr. Pig. <laughs> Get it right. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change up the uh, gender on this okay. one. I can okay. I can do lady voices. This is Lilith. She's from Ghost Rider, okay. Doctor Strange, and Blade. Okay. Lilith. Oh, let's see. What do we have here? <laughs> let's see here. Oh, gosh, why is my head so tall? <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's all I got. That's all you got? Okay. <laughs> I, I also have a female voice for you. Okay. Uh, Red Sonia. Red Sonia. Everybody kind of remembers yeah, Red Sonia. I feel like she would talk more like... I don't know. That's still a man <laughs> voice. We could pitch shift it if we need to, right? Yeah, yeah. We could totally... She should. would have more of a commanding type voice. <laughs> 
What was her name again? <laughs> red Sonia. Red Sonia, even though I'm not wearing anything red, but my hair is red. She sounds awfully educated for uh, a Conan-esque type Yeah, but character. they always kind of talk like this. So <laughs> very, like... Okay, okay. I'm, I am here to do <laughs> stuff with my red hair. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I'm confused. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Since, um... We have a, a, a special interview with Kevin Sorbo. Uh oh. So this will, you know, this part of the Hercules universe, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but it's also Marvel. If you didn't know, yes, uh, there is a Hercules in the yes. Marvel. Well, there is a villain called Pluto. Ooh. All right, let's have a look at this here. Is he the big guy? Yeah, he's that dude. Yeah, I've been thinking, uh, you know, uh, just looking around. Yeah, this Hercules fellow is really kind of getting on my nerves. And maybe we should do something to. Stop him from doing all that kind of Hercules stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I've got one. Okay. This one is uh, a comic book character a lot of people probably haven't heard much about, but it's, it's oh, his I, name is Captain Sporadic, and here's the picture <laughs> of Captain Sporadic. Oh, yeah. Okay. Dude, I think he's cool. Captain <laughs> he's Sporadic. Cool, yeah. He's so cool. Yeah. yeah. I think I've heard of him before. Um, nerd. I think, he's I, read, nerd. I think I read one of his storylines that was like, I think, two or three ten-page leaflets. <laughs> <laughs> Not even comic. They're just leaflets. <laughs> All right. Captain Sporadic. He'd be like, I have to go save the day. What's this toaster doing in my floor? I, I don't know if you guys throw, have you guys talked about dinosaurs today. I don't think so. I ride a scooter. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. nice. Captain. That's sporadic enough, I suppose. Sporadic. They'll see the picture. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> uh, all right. I got You got any more cameo? No, that's okay, it right I got now. one more. Just throw me one more. One throw me more. One more. Uh, it's from a movie that's coming out very soon. Logan. Hmm. But I haven't heard the voice of X-23 yet. Mm. <laughs> so you're a young female okay. killer on the loose. Okay. Yeah, I was just sitting home playing with my dollies. Next thing I know, I had these weird claws coming out of my hands. And then I started getting real mad at everyone, and I cut this guy's mouth off. (laughs) And then everybody was mad at me, so I had to run away. (laughs) Next thing I know, I found another big guy with big claws like mine. Now he's my best friend. (laughs) Nailed it. Perfect. Nailed it. it. Like it. If that's not what I hear when I go see Logan, I'm freaking out. I'm I'm going to want my money back. Yeah. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. <laughs> Faux show. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll just go to the movie with you and do that commentary as loud as I can. <laughs> <laughs> you should. Everything she says, you repeat back. Yeah. yeah. I want you to give everybody's voices. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. everybody yeah. new voices. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be my next venture in life is just to go and redo the audio of every movie that I appreciate. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yeah, we should do that. We should redub yeah. one of these movies. Yeah. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will be back in two weeks. That's our promise yep. to you. Mm-hmm. I mean, unless the world goes crazy. Unless that yeah. comet comes and smashes into us. Like, <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're saying they're like, oh, well, either it's going to miss us by 320 million miles or... Or it's going to hit the earth and we're all screwed. <laughs> that yeah. is a big difference. Yeah. So that might happen next week, folks. Uh, some NASA scientists are a little bit spooked about it. So spooky. Oh, yeah. no. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we, we but we hope to be back. Yeah. yeah. We'll probably yeah. be back. We'll soldier on. Yeah. Even yeah. if it's the apocalypse. Yeah. Oh, we're still doing this. Yeah. yeah. Even if, like, there's no electricity, we're still going to congregate in this room and talk into these microphones. Yeah. yeah. For no reason. Yeah. We will. We will broadcast to the apocalypse. Yep. <laughs> that uh, is our promise to you, nerds to men, to yeah, the very end. Very end. That's right. And it's the end of the show. You know who will save us, though? Kevin Sorbo. Yes, he will. <laughs> yes, he will. Yes, he will. Yes, Hercules. Yeah, Hercules. 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 <laughs> he will save us. So, uh, yeah, he's you actually... tired of this Hercules guy doing all this Hercules stuff. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> My name's Pluto. What? <laughs> That's the thing, is that every character has to say their name in the sentence, then. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. we're the Nerds to Men, Kevin Zorbo, interview yeah. with Cameo. Hercules. Kevin Zorbo, how are you doing? Good, how are you doing, Cameron? I'm doing pretty good, pretty good. And um, I just got to let you know that you were who I looked up to in the 90s whenever I was watching Hercules. Great time with that show. I got a little bragging on it. We did become the most watched TV show in the world, which is pretty cool. That is pretty cool. And how do you feel about that? 
I loved it. You know, I mean, I had a great time shooting. I lived down there in New Zealand for seven years filming the show. I worked with wonderful people. Most of my crew went on to work on Lord of the Rings after we wrapped shooting. So, uh, you know, I worked with some pretty talented people. Awesome, awesome. Ed, I was wondering, were you a big fan of Greek mythology going in to uh, doing Hercules? Oh, I was as a kid. You know, junior high school days when I was 13, 14 years old, I read a lot of mythology, and obviously Hercules was one of my favorite characters. So for me to end up playing that character and being becoming such an iconic show was was pretty cool because it's back out there on Netflix now. So people that are have never seen it, I get a lot of these 16, 17 year old kids yep. that come up in the grocery stores and malls and seeing how much they love the show. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that I mean the way it was put together, the the, the graphics when it you know did some like craziness in it, like some of the monsters and whatnot, was just off the chain. I worked. You know, it was the Weta Group, the guys that went on to win all those Academy Awards that did all the creatures on Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit. Those were the guys that we worked with down there in New Zealand. So they were like an upstart company back then, a very small company. And we were pretty much like a training ground for those guys. So um, it was kind of neat to be part of those guys. We're still good friends. In fact, I got two, I've got two new movies with them right now that we're trying to get funding put together on that uh, I, I want them to do all the visual effects. Awesome. Uh, could you tell us a little bit something about that? Well, one is called Stuffed. Okay. S-T-U-F-T, all capital letters. It's sort of like Muppets on Crack. <laughs> nice. Very funny movie. So we'll see what happens. The other one's called Janitors. And Janitors is uh, that there's uh, this whole life living in tunnels underneath the surface of the earth. And very interesting and odd characters down there. So we'll hope to get those off the ground. Those sound interesting. I, I can't wait to see that. Yeah, that'd be cool. We're hoping maybe make it uh, like a backdoor pilot and make it a TV series. Oh, awesome. And I, I want to ask you about that. How is it going from TV to film? You know, and the only difference really is the longer days on, on movies. They shoot, you know, you're lucky if you shoot, you know, sometimes one page a day. And then in, in television, you're shooting eight to ten pages of a script a day, so it's much faster paced. So, um, you know, there's just longer setup times, and it just, it's just kind of a cruisy, cruisy part of, uh, of, of uh, time on the set. So you got to use your time wisely. Yeah, and, and how, how fun was it uh, shooting in New Zealand? I, I've always wanted to go, but, I mean, you know, I, I don't have the money right now. So <laughs> so how is it out there? Is it beautiful, like it, like all the, the, the visuals that were in Hercules and, and pictures and stuff? Where's that? I'm sorry, what did you say? The uh, New Zealand, like, how pretty is it out oh, there? God, New Zealand's fantastic. It's amazing. I mean, uh, Jenny Shipley, who was the uh, prime minister at the time, said that, that when once Hercules started airing, she said that their... their um, uh, tourism almost tripled over the years that Hercules was there, and obviously went up even more when when uh, Lord of the Rings came out. But uh, they they said that people watching the show, it just all of a sudden was brought in tons of stuff. So I told her, I said, well, you should make me a citizen somehow. Then I should get buy <laughs> dual citizenship, here, right? You know? so, but that that never happened. But anyway, it was it is beautiful. I'm, I'm going back next year. I'm taking my whole family to go down there. My kids never saw it, so we're, we're planning a trip for twenty. Actually, a year from January, so in 2018. Okay, awesome. That sounds really, really fun. Um, and if you want to take me, that'd be cool, right? That'd be very cool. Not a problem. <laughs> awesome. I was in Oklahoma City last year. I did a speaking event there at the uh, at the Cowboy Museum. Is that what it's called? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. Really yes. Nice. I- yeah, we. Um, I had to do a uh, promotional deal out there for the station, and I've never been in there, and I was just in awe on how awesome it was. Yeah, you got to go. People haven't seen it. That's what happens. A lot of times it's in your backyard, and you just don't go. Exactly, yeah. I'm, I'm very bad about that. <laughs> um, and I also want to know your workout regimen, because you were pretty jacked in, I mean, you still are, but in Hercules, like, you were, you were like, I mean, you were Hercules. So how? What was, was your workout regimen? I weighed 230 pounds at about seven percent body fat. I was pretty ripped up. I was in good shape. <laughs> so, I'm, an old, I'm an old dude now. I'm in my fifties, so I still work out every day. I got a beautiful gym in my house, but uh, I had a great time doing that show. I, I love Andromeda too. I got to give a plug for Andromeda. It's the first show ever created by Gene Roddenberry after Star Trek. It just came out on Blu-ray, DVD. So if people want, um, uh, you know, get all of it. That actually, I recommend going to my fan site, KevinSorbo.net, since. It's Christmas time. If you want some autograph stuff from Hercules Andromeda or any of my 50 movies or my book, True Strength, please go to kevinsorbo.net. Click on the merchandise section. There's all kinds of stuff that I can send out to you, and I'll personalize it, whatever you want. Awesome. That's great. And I want to talk about your book. Um, I, I had no idea that you were going through so much stuff back then. Well, you know what? Back, you know, 
know, you could never keep this quiet in today's media savvy world, but um, I actually um, suffered three strokes at the end of season five on Hercules. Wow. I wrote a book about it called True Strength. Uh, my journey from Hercules to Mere Mortal, and it was about my recovery. It took me three years to fully recover from it. And uh, I wrote a book. It came out, and I've been doing a lot of speaking events over the last four years on the book. And uh, it, it was a tough road to get back, but it was really, it really deals with that roadblock that we all hit in our lives and how we react to that roadblock. Well, that's great, man. I'm glad you're doing well, and I'm glad that you're still doing what you love, uh, because I know some people um, that have, like, you know, very life-threatening deals going on in their lives, they they kind of back away from their, their passion. And for you to keep on acting and, and doing what you're, what you love is, is very commendable. Well, thank you, sir. I mean, it was, it was, it was tough, but I mean, I, I had a, I got a strong face and I got a wife that was very tough on me as well. She's a tough New Yorker. And, uh, I just said, I'm not gonna let this thing control my life. And, uh, it was, it was, you know, I, I had more things I want to do with my life and I've been very fortunate to make the comeback that I have. Well, that's really awesome. And, and I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad you're doing well too. And I, I was wondering, um, being an actor, how is it with a family, three kids? How is that? Is that, do you bring them with you whenever you go shoot somewhere or how, how do you work with that? So they come with, we homeschool and there was, there's a couple of reasons for that. Um, number one, the main reason was because public schools and education aren't really that great. Right. And they need, you know, our public education system is pretty much broken. I think people uh, can't, can't deny that. I'm sure teachers will come after me, but my dad was a public school teacher and <laughs> I got a lot of facts to back up how bad our education is compared to other countries. But, uh, I do travel a lot. So when that traveling hits, uh, the, the family comes with me, which is great. That's really awesome because I that I mean I always wondered wondered uh, how that would happen like if I were to be part of a um, of of a film or because I I grew up in the dance world and I never saw the the people that I knew that went on and dance that had families I never seen them take their kids so I didn't know how that worked out with in the um, in the acting field. Well, that certainly was my wife's decision because she said, you know, you're not going to be gone for two months. We're not going to be with you. And, you know, she's, she's in the acting world, too. In, fa- in fact, I just finished directing a movie that she wrote, and that won't come out until next year. It's called Let There Be Light, and I hope people check it out. But uh, I just finished my cut on it, and we're putting all the bells and whistles in now to make it look great. But uh, uh, it, w- it was a wonderful working experience to work with her that way, and um, I'm looking forward to this movie coming out. Awesome. And, and tell us about that, Let There Be Light. Let There Be Light. Pretty heavy faith-based uh, drama, um, Christmas movie, so it won't come out till next November. Okay. And uh, so we're just doing some early promotion work on it right now, and it's just it's it's an interesting movie. I, I don't want to give too much away right now, but if people want to see some some clips on it, I will be on Fox News this Wednesday on the Hannity Show because Sean Hannity is our exec producer. He financed the movie because he was a big fan of my faith-based movies, What If and God's Not Dead and Abel's Field. Mm-hmm. And um, so we're going to be on the show uh, this Wednesday, so people can check it out Wednesday night to see a couple of clips from the movie. Well, that's fantastic. Well, Kevin Sorbo, um, I know you gave your, your website out for all your memorabilia. Um, you want to give that out again and your, maybe your social media sites as well? Yeah, it's kevinsorbo.net, kevinsorbo.net. If they want to follow me on Facebook, you got to go to... Uh, it's Kevin Sorbo's official Facebook page. There's a lot of people pretending to be me. <laughs> so it's Kevin Sorbo's official Facebook page. On Twitter, it's K Sorbs. S O R B S K S O R B S K Sorbs. Awesome. Well, Kevin Sorbo, well, I'm glad you're doing well now, and I hopefully you, you keep on this road, and I cannot wait to see Let There Be Light. I, I, I believe that's going to be pretty awesome and pretty touching as well. Cool. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Have a good one. All right. Take care. You too. Bye bye. Next time, Gadget. Next time.